Corned beef and cabbage is a great dish. It's usually served around St. Patrick's Day, but why is that? Probably because it takes so long to prepare. Some people will roast it in the oven, which takes a long time. Even if you put it on first thing in the morning in a slow cooker, it could take eight to nine hours before it's ready. So in this video, I wanna show you how to cut down that cooking time to under two hours. I'm also gonna do a kind of an unexpected twist on the cabbage. I'm not gonna cook it alongside the beef. We're gonna do them separate, and then when they come together, they're gonna to be absolutely delicious. By shortening that cooking time, you can have this year round because it's just as delicious in October as it is in March. So why not have it year round? If you're ready to find out how I do my twist on corned beef and cabbage, stick around. So corned beef is basically a brisket that's soaked in a brine with all kinds of spices in it. You take it out, it comes with a little spice pack that you put in, but I'm gonna add a few more things to it as well. It's a traditional Irish dish, but we also do a lot of it in the South because we got a lot of cabbage down here. And the key to cabbage is cooking it in a way that infuses a lot of flavor and kind of gets rid of that sulfury smell that a lot of people don't like. So let me show you my quick and easy method of how to make this corned beef and cabbage. It's gonna take you under two hours and it's gonna be just as delicious if it had been sitting and cooking all day long. Let me show you all the ingredients you need for this corned beef and cabbage. Well, since this is a corned beef recipe, obviously the first thing you gotta have is corned beef. Now around St. Patrick's Day and other times of the year, they have these on sale. You want somewhere around a two pound brisket. This one's slightly over, it's two and a third pounds. It'll work just fine. So it's brined to give you that great flavor and that's the little seasoning packet that I was telling you about that I'm gonna dump in as well as some other things. You're gonna need a pretty good sized onion. Now this is a Vidalia or sweet onion, but you can use any kind of onion that you like. You're gonna need some minced garlic. This is the kind I get at Walmart. It's already minced up. If you like to do your own fresh, that works great too. You're gonna need pickling spice. You can make your own. There's plenty of recipes online for how to do it if you want. I'll just buy it at the store and I really only use it when I'm making the corned beef. You're gonna need some water, some H2O. Now you may be thinking, wow, that is a lot of water. You're gonna be boiling this thing and I'm not gonna boil it. That's three cups of water right there. We're actually gonna need more than that for this recipe. So what I'm gonna do is take my onion and quarter it. Well, I thought I was gonna quarter it, but trying to do it one-handed, I didn't exactly get it quartered, but try to quarter it. If you're not holding a camera and trying to cut, you'll probably have better success with that. Then you gotta peel it. So once it's peeled, this is what it looks like. This is used just for flavoring. Don't even eat this. You're gonna need an instant pot with the rack in the bottom. The rack is very important for this to pull it out later. So we're just gonna put that brisket right on in there. Man, that's a good looking hunk of meat, isn't it? And then we're just gonna put the onions in there, just around it. Once you put this thing under pressure, it is gonna be absolutely delicious. You can tell a big difference using the onion in there like that. We're gonna dump in all the water. So we're not boiling it in the water. That rack helps it kind of sit up just a little bit. So it's not actually gonna boil. It's gonna get steam all through it in there. It's gonna be delicious. We're gonna dump in as much or as little garlic as you like. As you can tell around here, we don't have to worry about vampires. And if you don't like garlic, I don't know what's wrong with you, but I guess you could leave it out if you wanted to. We'll dump in that tiny little spice packet that came with the corned beef. But man, you gotta have more than that. I like some flavor. I'm gonna dump in a whole bunch of that pickling spice. It really makes a big difference in it. You want your meat to have some flavor, don't you? Now it's time for that brisket spa treatment. I'm giving it a nice little massage. Maybe even give it a little soak. The more flavor, the better. You can put some salt and pepper on there too if you really want to, but I think it comes out delicious just the way it is. There's a little bit of salt in there anyway, and that brine was salty. Now you gotta put the lid on the Instant Pot, and you just twist it to lock it in place. You don't have to worry about it flying off. So we're gonna put it on the pressure cook setting. It's gonna be on the high pressure, and we're gonna crank this thing all the way down to an hour and 10 minutes. So that's how we can cook it in such a short period of time, and it still come out delicious. Now you may not wanna cook it that long. If you want it like a medium rare, 
but I like to do mine about 180 degrees, which is like a perfect brisket temperature. But if you don't like yours to fall apart, cut down on the time just a little bit. Now all that corned beef's getting all happy in there, we need to go ahead and preheat the oven for the cabbage. So we're gonna go to 400 degrees, and then we'll go ahead and start to prep this cabbage. The first thing you're gonna need is some cabbage, and I would definitely recommend going on the smaller side when you pick out a cabbage. You're gonna need some bacon grease, and this is what I keep mine in. I'll put a link to it down below in the Amazon store so you can get one yourself. But the thing I like most about it is it has a strainer in the top. So it catches all the little bits, and it just leaves you with some nice, clean bacon grease to cook with. You're gonna need some garlic powder. I love this one from Badia because it's super inexpensive. You're gonna need some seasoning salt or y'all-purpose seasoning. For this one, I'm gonna use seasoned salt, but you know I love the y'all-purpose seasoning also. You're gonna need some smoked paprika. I would definitely recommend the smoked paprika and not just the plain paprika for some smokiness. So now take your favorite knife to cut cabbage with. I like this serrated blade. I mean, you could use a samurai sword or whatever you want, but I definitely like the bread knife and I don't use it for bread, so might as well use it for something. So I'm gonna take it and cut right down the middle. I'm gonna cut this thing in half at first. And this is when I found out how tough this little cabbage was. It wouldn't go all the way through, so I guess I'm about to bring in some reinforcements. So now I'm gonna have to come in with a heavy hitter. I'm gonna bring in my chef's knife and that's gonna go ahead and finish the work for me. That was a tough cabbage, but it doesn't matter because once you put it in the oven and it cooks the way that I cook it, it's gonna be delicious and it's not gonna be tough, don't worry. Now you want this to be as flat as possible, so you're gonna wanna cut off a little bit of the end too, you know, once you get done doing this. But just cut your other half in half and then we're gonna cut the other half in half. Now it's time to put together the spice blend for the cabbage. So first, I'm gonna go in with the smoked paprika. You're gonna need a couple teaspoons of that. I'm gonna go in with some garlic powder. And you're gonna use a tablespoon of this. You can add a little bit more of that if you really like garlic, but I like it and it's plenty. And then go in with your seasoned salt or whatever kind of seasoning that you're gonna use. Look how good that looks. And it's gonna look even better once it's brown on top. So I'm gonna mix this all together. Now, why am I using the measuring spoon to mix it? I have no idea. Probably because I'm stubborn and I would probably stir this five times as long if that's what it took to stir it up versus just getting out a spoon and doing it the easy way. But hey, whatever, it worked. Now, if you like videos like this and you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button that just lit up down there for you. And anytime I make a video like this or any other kind of video, you'll know about it. For the cabbage, you're gonna to need to line a baking sheet with some parchment paper. And I know what you're thinking, that parchment paper is dirty. But pro tip and money saving tip, you can reuse parchment paper quite a few times. So I'm just gonna take my cabbage and try to keep them all together. You can kind of see some of the little pieces flopping over like that, but just keep them together as good as you can. And make sure you leave plenty of room between each piece for cooking. Now I'm gonna take my little paintbrush and I'm gonna paint on some of that melted bacon grease. Now you can do one of two things. Put your stainless steel bacon grease collector on the stove top and melt it down. Or you could just put a spoon in there, get enough bacon grease out, put it in a coffee mug and just melt it in the microwave with a paper towel over the top of it, either way. Now we gotta go ahead and put the seasoning on the cabbage. Now I made enough seasoning for two batches of this because we're gonna have this cabbage again in the next week or so. So I just keep the rest in a little plastic bag or, or a glass container. Either way is fine. Now we're gonna flip these over because we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And if that falls apart like that, just throw it back together. It'll be fine. Now there's one little piece you're gonna wanna cut out right here. That's the core and that's just gonna get even harder if you bake it and so you just wanna take that out. It's not good. Get rid of it. And now it's time to paint the other side with that delicious bacon grease. You wanna make sure you get a good coating on there because this is gonna brown up pretty nice. So don't be scared of the bacon grease. Put on about this much or, hey, throw a little more on there if you want. And then go ahead and season the other side. 
Now I hope you're not one of those people that only seasons one side of their food, or if you do, you really need to look at which side has the seasoning on it and put that down on your taste buds so that you'll be able to taste it. It's just easier to season both sides and that's what makes it delicious. Oh man, that is looking delicious. And we hadn't even cooked it yet. But now it's time to go ahead and throw it in the oven. And remember, we already preheated the oven to 400 degrees. So once I put it in, I'm just gonna go ahead and set the timer to 25 minutes. Now it's time to check on the corned beef. And when you see all zeros like that, that means that the pressure cooking is done. The keep warm setting is now on and we want to let it release its steam naturally at this point. Now if you were wanting to release it manually, you would slide that, but we're going to let it sit for 15 minutes. It actually sat for 18 minutes. So at that point, we'll go ahead and release the steam manually. So I'm going to go up top, that little slide button right there is going to release the steam. After that sound gets real quiet, watch for the pin to drop. That's when it's safe to open it now. Let's check on the cabbage. After 25 minutes, this is how they come out. This is exactly how you want them to look. Tell me that doesn't look delicious. And that's going to be even better once that corned beef gets on top. Now we got to finish the corned beef. So line a baking pan with aluminum foil. You don't want to use parchment paper here, you need foil. So I'm going to take the corned beef out using that little rack that I was telling you about that was so important to use. We're going to get rid of the onions and I'm going to put the corned beef right on the baking sheet. Oh man, that's looking good, but we are not done yet. We got to get a nice crust on it, right? So how are we going to do that? I'm going to go to the oven and preheat it on high broil and let it get nice and hot before you go in with this beautiful brisket. Oh, it's ready for a nice suntan. So I'm just gonna set my timer for two minutes and do two minutes or until you get the crust on the outside that you like. And basically all we're doing here is just getting a nice sear on it just to lock in the juices. And I'm gonna flip this one over and go to the other side. So I'm going to cook the other side just a little bit more than that one, but let's go back into the broiler with it and I'll show you what it looks like. So back in we go. I'll leave the spices on top. You could brush them off if you wanted to, but it doesn't bother me a bit. So I'm just going to leave it on and we'll cook it for another couple minutes or until this is done as you like on the outside. And now it's time to cut this delicious corned beef. Now I'm going to show you the best way to do it. And as I said earlier, if you like it to come out in pieces, don't cook it as long in there. I like mine to fall apart. So I like that 180 degree temperature internal, but 145 at a bare minimum. Now I'm going to show you how to cut this. Now, a lot of times you'll hear about cutting it along the grain or across the grain. So that's the grain that we're talking about there. And what you want to do is cut this against the grain. So you're just going to slice it right across the grain and see how that just falls apart like that. If you cook it to that 145, like I was saying, it's going to slice. Now this is fall apart goodness. This is absolutely delicious melt in your mouth corned beef. And I forgot to show you my temperature check. So we'll just go ahead and do it now. So, I'll link this thermometer. If you don't have one of these, I'll link it down below so you can get one. You always want to cook meat to temperature and not to time, but because I've done this one so much, I know that that's exactly the time I need to get that size meat to the temperature that I like. Can you smell that? Oh man, I wish you could. Now it's time to plate up this goodness. Look how beautiful that cabbage looks. Now I know this is probably not the way you're used to having corned beef and cabbage, it's a little bit different, but I think you're going to love it. So I'll just take one piece of that cabbage, put it right on the middle of the plate like that, and then go in with as much or as little corned beef as you like. I mean, I like a lot, so I'm going to get a lot. One thing that goes great with corned beef 
is my Nana's yellow mustard sauce. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in here somewhere so that you can check it out. It goes great with this delicious corned beef. Now, if you like this dish and you want some other keto dishes that are gonna go really, really great any time of year, check out this playlist right here. It's got a lot of videos I think you're gonna like. Thanks so much for sharing these videos. I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. Stop it. <laughs>